This is episode 144 of the Two Ball Brothers and a Microphone podcast, where we talk about the people, process, and technology to work together better inside of enterprises. This episode was recorded on November 21st, 2017. In this episode, I talk with Tim Colson about our practice areas and some of the project types that he enjoys working on. If you'd like to catch up with what Tim has done lately, this should serve the purpose well. Enjoy this episode, and thanks for listening. Hello and welcome to the Two Ball Brothers and a Microphone podcast. This is your host, Danny Ryan, and I'm here with Tim Colson. How are you doing, Tim? Oh, I'm doing well. Thank oh, you. Very good, very good. Tim sits right across the wall from me, so every once in a while I get to hear uh, some interesting things coming from his direction. So always keeping it uh, professional, business-like, but some fun conversations. Of course, you have of course. To be in every once in a while. So I, I, I am the epitome of professional. <laughs> And you are you're an architect too, right? Is that yes, correct? Or no. some what is what's your status nowadays? Is exactly. that, have, you, have you reached any enlightened statuses at all recently? <laughs> no. Um, so I wanted to catch up with Tim, see how things are going. Just um, uh, have our quarterly chit chat, and uh, I think for this one, we just wanted to talk about some, uh, I guess, recent projects or projects that we've had over the last couple of years, and just some of your thoughts on those projects. Yeah, since I really didn't want to take time to write a blog, uh, <laughs> I was thinking, what what can I talk to Danny about? And one of the things I was, um, I guess, one of the things that prompted, I guess, what I wanted to talk about today was within the last couple of years, um, Three Wheel has started to focus in on on the various uh, areas. So, so the principal consultants are assigned uh, as principals of each of uh, the different areas that we. Uh, I guess approach it at three wheel the things that we focus on and uh, so I figured I would sort of break it down into uh, those uh, principal areas that we focus on and talk about the different types of projects that uh-huh. we that I've worked on as well as the ones I I guess like kind of least least favorite <laughs> to to most favorite. So these are the different practice areas like migrations, um, portals, exactly. apps, and sustainment. So you've have you been on each type of project? Um, yes, actually, I've worked on on each of those over over the years. So. And let's start with your favorite migrations, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that'll actually be my least favorite. So I was thinking about okay, why you know why are some of these uh, you know more favorite? Why do I enjoy some of these more than others? And, and the thing I concluded was really it's for me I enjoy the personal interaction mm-hmm. so some people are really into going into a closet you know burying their head in code and writing code for me it's more uh, interaction with people whether that be uh, people on my development team whether that be the customer and and in a I guess an ideal project it's both where I'm interfacing with the customer team I've also got other team members I'm working with and then uh, together in a collaborative way, we create uh, a solution that is not only functional f- uh, and, and helpful for the customer, but also something that um, is appealing, mm-hmm. something that has a nice looking uh, user interface that's engaging, that uh, people don't dread using, and, and ideally something that people will actually enjoy using. So as you think about migrations, one the way I... I, I think about migrations as sort of like uh, if if I were going from one email provider to another, um, in the end, it's email, and I'm not going to really feel like, you know, the only thing you're going to get credit for is if you do a bad job, because in the end, if you do a good job, then it's pretty much what I had before. You know, maybe it's on a different platform, uh, but you've basically moved me, you know, not really probably given me a lot of different functionality. You've just taken me from... Uh, having a certain functionality on one platform, and now I have that functionality on another platform. So uh, usually people underestimate the effort involved, uh, so they're disappointed when they realize, wow, it's going to cost a lot of money to basically keep the same functionality that I have. Uh, And a lot of times it's driven by 
licensing. Maybe they're getting rid of an old product that has a really expensive uh, licensing renewal and maybe moving to uh, Office 365 because it maybe comes with some new subscriptions that they purchase. So it's it's essentially free or a lot cheaper. So so for me, migrations um, out of all the things that we do is probably probably my least favorite. Um, however, it certainly uh, is useful uh, for certain customers at, at certain times. Probably the next one um, I think about are collaboration spaces. So whether that be an intranet, or whether that be an extranet, usually places where people need to collaborate around certain content. Um, in some cases, um, people have really wanted to make that appealing looking. So we've done some, in addition to out of the box functionality of, of SharePoint, we've done some more custom UIs that make the experience a little bit nicer. And in some cases, we've added some custom features within the site to uh, make tagging data a little bit easier. That way, the search is more effective across the site. And sometimes we've created templates so that sites can be recreated, so that project sites can easily be recreated from a template. That way, they're consistent across mm -hmm. all the different projects. That way, when someone moves from one project to another, they can already anticipate what, you know, what the structure is which makes it easier to find uh, the different types of documents they're looking for. So um, so those are um, also pretty fun to work on as well. Usually you're interacting with the customers to decide, okay, you know, how do we want to build out this project site to make it, you know, the most useful, the most beneficial. And sometimes there's different types of project sites depending on the types of projects. There's different needs, whether it be a document libraries or, uh, you know, different features, different list features, custom lists. So, so that's uh, also pretty involved, you know, working with the customers. So, so I enjoy those as well. Public websites, I've done some of those both uh, with SharePoint as well as outside of SharePoint. Currently, I've been working on a public website for two years now that's a, a support site for uh, a tax an auditing product company so they sell uh, products they sell books um, so they have you know the general types of support needs you would uh, want on a, on a site you've got knowledge base you've got search capability within that knowledge base you've got uh, the ability to create tickets uh, web cases in this case you've got um, the ability to chat live with a customer service representative you got the ability to to search within the site not only the knowledge base content but other other content around their products uh, so it's uh, you know what's nice about that is generally there you know it's something that UI is very important because yeah. you want to make the the user experience nice so we get to spend quite a bit of time working on uh, the user interface so those are uh, those are fun to work with you you have an intent of you know you kind of put yourself in the position of the people that visit this site okay if I'm visiting this site what would my experience what would I want my experience to be what are the type of things I'm going to be looking for and and base, basically based on that then you want to try to customize or optimize the site to make that experience as good as possible I mean I'm a consumer I use you know an AT&T website for my mobile phone uh, I use Comcast or Xfinity for my cable provider, so I know the types of interactions that I have with a public website, particularly a support website. So as I think about that, then I think about, okay, you know, customers are going to come to this support site for similar reasons. How can I make that experience as good as possible, not only from a visual perspective, but also ease of use? Uh, you know, how can I make it as understandable as possible? That way they can find what they need and you know, get on with their business. So, mm -hmm. um, so public websites are a lot of fun. Probably the, the ones I enjoy the most, however, are departmental applications. Usually there's a fairly small subset of people that use this site. There's usually a defined process or a business process that, process that they're trying to follow. So really it's about, okay, how can I create an application that's going to support that process, whether that be 
a process that needs to work through some sort of a approval process. Um, those are pretty popular. Those uh, we're able to leverage a lot of what's built into SharePoint for for those types of um, applications because SharePoint does have approval workflows built in, so we're able to customize those to to meet various types of approval processes. Sometimes it might be a single approval. Sometimes it might be an escalating approval where we might have two or three people involved in the approval process. But within those uh, application type uh, departmental applications, of course, we're interviewing different users, understanding within the process, you know, maybe two, three, four different user types. What is their role within this process? What kind of views of the data do they need at any given point in time to see, okay, what invoices are being approved, what, what's the current status of, of invoices, for example, or uh, in some other cases it's been approval of messaging that needed to go out to customers in, uh, in an envelope. So, so we've uh, done various types of departmental applications over the years, so for me, it's just a lot of fun to work with all the different people to understand, okay, what are their needs within this application? And then, you know, create something that helps support their process, that it gives each user the information they need at, at the various uh, points in the process to be able to do their job. And, uh, you know, in the end, just adds value, mm -hmm. uh, makes their job easier, makes them more efficient, more productive. Nice. And then I guess the last type of um, project, have you done stuff with sustainment? Yes, sustainment, you know, really is, uh, in a lot of cases, a lot of the sustainment work, work I've done at least has been part of, you know, working on departmental applications or mm -hmm. working on public websites. So we're doing the ongoing maintenance as, as new features come about. For example, um, today on a lot of support sites, uh, to help cut costs for the companies and be able to provide, you know, quick, uh, quick answers to customers. A lot of bots now are being used to help uh, answer questions. Sort of a automated chat instead of chatting with a live customer rep, you're chatting with a robot. So that's a fairly recent technology. Yeah. So within a sustainment process, you know, we might be asked to add that to an existing website you know it's not a brand new rewrite it's just a new feature that we want might want to add to a, a public website so you know within uh, within sustainment I've added a lot of new features to different applications maybe uh, you know a new report a new view of data someone thinks about that would be helpful to help support their job then really a lot of times that's where sustainment comes in they give us a call and say Hey, I'd like this new feature on an application that you're that you wrote for us, and that you know you're doing sustainment for us. So, could you please uh, let's talk about what are the requirements? Could you give me an estimate, and then let's uh, let's build this to help you know make the application better, help it evolve over time as requirements change over time. Nice, nice. Well, I appreciate that you. Um... You know, I think in in the end, trying to help out these different departments, something that's really going to make a difference in their day to day. I think I really hear you there, and that's got to feel nice to be able to do that. And then um, that's the rewarding yeah, part to know yeah. at the end of the day that you've actually created something that people find useful. You must be really excited that I'm um, I'm really focusing in on a lot of migration work, right? That's, <laughs> that's why I'm going to stay on this public website for another couple <laughs> years. So, uh... no, it's it's well, other projects come after that. It's actually a really good way to to get to work with new clients, and I think a lot of people, um, even though it's uh, you know, you could have someone who's not very educated about what it takes to migrate. Uh, that's part of my role is to is to communicate. Hey, we're not it's we're not switching out email. We're we're moving from um, one platform to another platform, and that's that's never easy. And somebody who's been in the industry for a while will know that. But uh, still, you've got to be able to communicate that. And, and fortunately or unfortunately, it makes a lot of sense to have a 
outside firm like us do that because why do that because you're only going to do it once or you know so right and, and part of our the concept of our practice series is we've done this over and over and over yes. we know what to expect yep when we're going from you know one you know platform a to platform b we've done that before we know you know some of the gotchas that you can anticipate we yep. can communicate those to you up front and, yeah Yep. you know, set an expectation, you know, here's your options to overcome that or, or we figured out how to fix it so we can, you know, we can address that. So mm-hmm. we'll either give you options on, you know, various ways you can approach it or if it's something we've, you know, solved where, you know, customer doesn't have to choose an option, they, we just fix it, we make it work like mm-hmm. they would expect. And so, you know, that's one of the, I think one of the key advantages to our principle to our focus areas our practice areas is Mm -hmm. that we do uh, kind of work within those to gain expertise and and then are able to help you know as we work with the next customer all the previous experience that we've gained with other customers can you know that they they get as a result of 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 these practice area focus you sticking around for turkey day or i'm not somewhere where are you going heading to my family's house nice very nice. Yeah, I'm Very looking nice. forward so to when that. when are you taking off? Tomorrow? Uh, today. Today? Of course, okay. I've got a deployment tonight at midnight, so uh, <laughs> so really tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> well, thank you for all that you do. I really appreciate um, you know, making a difference in a lot of these departments and, and continuing to learn and continuing to be open to new things and learning new things and sharing with others. And thanks for all that you do, Tim. Sure, Danny. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.